Welcome back. My name is Andrew Mossman. It's great to have you. We're going to begin our seventh presentation, and this presentation will be specifically talking about the 6,000 year time period. Gibbon, in his decline and fall of the Roman Empire, speaking of the faith and character of the primitive Christians, says, the ancient and popular doctrine of the millennium was intimately connected with the second coming of Christ. As the works of the creation had been finished in six days, their duration in a present state, according to a tradition which was attributed to the prophet Elijah, was fixed at 6,000 years. On the left-hand column, we have Irenaeus, which is the disciple of the disciple of John, who's believing in the 6,000 years. This corresponds with the quote we just read from Gibbon. We also have Barnabas, Cyprian, Lactanitius, the learned Joseph Mead, also known as the illustrious Mead, the Reverend Richard Clark, John Bunyan of Pilgrim's Progress, Luther, Calvin, Melanchthon, and Knox. So just from this list, we can see that there was many great, notable men that believed in this doctrine, a doctrine that dates all the way back to the apostolic era. Notice what Josiah Litch says about this doctrine. It appears to me that this argument in favor of the nearness of the great Sabbath will have its influence where no other will. For there are few persons who believe the Bible who will attempt to put the millennium beyond the 6,000th year of the world. I invite the most rigid criticism on the above outline. I like how the Millerites were convicted about what they believed in and wanted what they were, were sharing to be scrutinized by the brightest minds. Can you find any fault in this chronology on the 6,000 years, especially in light of all these other prophetic periods which we have been showing to harmonize around the Jewish year of 1843? Now let's look at William Miller's commentary on this 6,000 year prophecy. Surely all must agree that the weight of testimony is in favor of that chronology which makes the year of Christ's birth, according to our computation, 4,157 years after the creation or fall of man. Then, by adding 1843, we have our 6,000 years up to the commencing of the day of rest, or the beginning of the 7,000th year, or the great sh Sabbath of which our seventh day is but a shadow. What strong evidence is this, that we are now living at the end of the 6,000 years, in which the work of redemption must be completed, and the glory of God be revealed in the face of Jesus Christ at his appearing and his kingdom? So, what we're about to investigate and prove is that the 6,000th year did indeed end around that time of the world, and if you were in their shoes, would you stand for Christ knowing that he comes at the beginning of the millennium or the thousand years? Now, Usher's chronology, which is the most popular, dates the beginning of the world in 4004 BC. And Usher was indeed a great chronologer. But I want to show you a slight difference between his chronology and Miller's chronology. Which one do you think is the better chronology? On this slide, we have two parallel timelines, Usher and Miller. Now, all the chronologers are in agreement, more or less, when it comes to the different um, epochs uh, down, through the, down through time. But one place where they all seem to disagree is in the time span of the judges. So I'll give you, for instance, from Abraham to the flood, everybody agrees that it's 1,656 years because the Bible is so clear. But notice the fourth category on the screen. From the point of time that the ancient Israelites came out of Egypt to the time when the temple was dedicated under the reign of Solomon, we have different dates here. 
And the reason that that is, is because there's differing opinions on how long the time span of the judges lasts. So if we were to reconcile these differences, what would we do? We would want to go to the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about the time span of the judges. Now, in the book of Acts, Paul says something very, very clearly. He says, and after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. So the time span of the judges all the way down to Samuel the prophet is about the space of 450 years, according to Paul. This is inspiration. But Paul also teaches us that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So is there anywhere else in the Bible that would concur that it is truly about the space of 450 years? Well, what Miller did was he decided to go to the book of Judges and just add up all the different um, years that each judge reigned. Now, there is one... Um, we'll say mini dispensation that is not recorded in the Bible. It's called the elders and anarchy. It's mentioned, but we aren't given a specific amount of time. But Josephus, the historian says that it's 18 years. So what Miller did was he took the 18 years of Josephus and he simply just added it in with the reign of each judge and Philistine in the time span of the judges. So on the screen, you see all the math there. Uh, from, from Gideon down to Elon and all the way to Eli. And if you add everything up together, uh, I recommend, if there's any doubts, to do the math yourself and to go into the book of Judges and on a piece of paper, uh, do the math yourself. What we find is that there's 448 years. That's about the space of 450 years. That looks pretty good. So, Paul is definitely right. It is about the space of 450 years. And when we do the math ourselves, we come up with 448. So what Miller did was he just simply added in the difference. His time span of the judges is 153 years more than Usher's. So he added it back in and it pushed back the beginning, the date of the beginning of the world uh, from 4004 BC to 4157 BC. It was really that simple. And he noticed that after 6,000 years, 6,000 full years, that this would take us down to 1844. And I am sure once he discovered this, he must have been so excited and been almost overwhelmed by how clear and true the Bible is. So here are some timelines that size up all the various prophetic periods that we've been looking at in our presentation from 4,157 BC, 6,000 years takes us to 1844. We have the, from the 22nd year of Manasseh, a full seven times, a full seven prophetic years is 2,520 years. That's gonna take us to 1844, the 2450 from 607. That's gonna take us to uh, 1844, the 2300 days from 457. That's going to take us for, uh, to 1844 as well. Here is another slide with some of the other prophetic periods. If you're dating the captivity of northern Israel and you want to do a seven full prophetic times, that takes us to 1798. Um, from the taking away of the daily, we have the 1290 and 1335, again to 1798 and to 1844. And then we also have the 1260s to 1798. I just want to add in one little uh, caveat. And that is, there is a prophecy in the book of Ezekiel. Um, it's a seventh month prophecy, which would be 210 years. That also terminated in 1798. And we also learned about the 2000 years of Hosea. And so these are just some of the other prophetic periods that terminate around this time. This concludes presentation number seven. After the prophetic periods seemed to terminate, 
in the spring of 1844, the Advent ban entered into the tearing time and they realized that they were in the prophecy of Habakkuk chapter two and the parable of the 10 virgins. Join us next time to find out more.